This is Channel 6 Eyewitness News, live at 5. With Gene Tiernan, meteorologist Ben Pringle, and Bob Stevens, sports. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. 39 Americans held captive in Beirut for the past 17 days are free tonight. The convoy of Red Cross... Reflect today on the explosion that changed their lives one week ago. The former hostages in Beirut arrive at an Air Force base outside Washington, D.C., and an early morning fire on Tulsa's east side prompts a truck driver to become a hero. These stories and more next on Eyewitness News. <laughs> Coming up on Entertainment Tonight, Swedish model Bridget Nielsen scores a leading role opposite Arnold Schwarzenegger in the new film Red Sonja and stars off-camera with superstar Sly Stallone. Then, Valerie Bertinelli takes on a dramatic new role in the TV movie Silent Witness. Just the rehearsal process of it all was very frightening. Plus, a new spine tingler for cable on Entertainment Tonight. Entertainment Tonight, this evening at 6.30 here on Channel 6. The spirit of Oklahoma on six. This is Channel 6 Eyewitness News, live at 5. With Clayton Vaughn, Bob Lozier, meteorologist Jim Giles, and Bill Teagan Sports. Good evening. Several hundred people gathered in the Cleveland High School gymnasium this afternoon for a memorial service in honor of those who died last Tuesday. Twenty-one Airlex Corporation employees were killed and five others were hurt when the fireworks... George Nye says the state fire marshal should be put in charge of regulating fireworks manufacturing from now on. Friends of Alan Johnson say, though, that they doubt he will rebuild that plant. Former, the former TWA hostages are finally back in this country. And up next, we'll have a report on the end of their ordeal. And can an ordinary citizen step in and make a difference? Coming up next on Eyewitness News, the story of one man who helped save the lives of victims in an apartment fire early this morning. Turning back, body and this little sleepwalker means Jungle Man Jeff will conquer a fur coat. Can this pair of plucky pirates pick a paradise prize package? Will Sheila go for a spin with door number four and more? All on the next Let's Make a Deal. Wednesday at 4.30 on 6. Oklahoma's prison crisis has been going on for so long with no relief that today's signing of still another emergency proclamation by the governor didn't create much excitement. It will, however, result in the immediate release of more than 100 inmates whose terms are near an end and shorten the sentences of more than 2,300 others. All of this is because there are simply too many inmates and too few places to put them here in Oklahoma, a situation that keeps getting worse, not better. The state is now operating under a so-called cap law. That allows for the early release of some inmates when the prison population reaches close to capacity. That's what happens each time the governor is notified by the corrections department that the population limits have been reached. Now, about the only thing that has been done to try to relieve this problem in ways other than outright releases is the house arrest program. And that caused so much controversy that the legislature just last month approved a new set of guidelines under which that program is now operating. The simple fact is that there are too many prisoners in Oklahoma for the state's capacity to house them, a situation that probably sooner rather than later is going to cause us grief. Live at five. Channel 6 Eyewitness News continues. It's 28 minutes after 5, and here are the top stories that we're covering for you on this Tuesday on Eyewitness News. About 30 victims of the TWA hijacking are back in the USA. The former hostages flew into Andrews Air Force Base near Washington this afternoon, where they were given a warm welcome by a group of friends and relatives. President Reagan greeted the group with the words, Welcome home, as they ex exited the chartered TWA jetliner. Former Oklahoma State Prison Warden John Brown is saying that his firing yesterday came as a complete surprise. Brown was fired by Corrections Director Larry Meacham because Meacham says there were too many violent incidents at the McAllister Prison and new leadership was needed. There have been 53 serious incidents inside the walls at McAllister in the first six months of this year. And it was one week ago today that the Airlex fireworks plant near Jennings, Oklahoma exploded, killing 21 people. Today at the Cleveland High School Gymnasium, families and friends of the explosion victims gathered for a memorial service to honor the dead and the injured. 
Governor Nye also declared today a statewide day of mourning in connection with the tragedy. A community memorial service was held in Cleveland. Coming up next on the Tuesday edition of Tulsa Tonight, families and friends of the 21 people killed at last week's fireworks plant explosion gathered today in Cleveland for a memorial service. 30 of America's 39 TWA hostages finally put their feet on American soil, and some have harsh words for their captors. And there is agreement on a summit meeting between U.S. and Soviet leaders next month in Geneva. Those stories, plus all the weather and sports, next. Jock. Yes, <laughs> Jock Ewing. They're going hunting. It looks to me like somebody punched a hole right in the bottom of this sucker. Well, it wasn't like that when we got it from the store. We just smelled the fumes. What is going on? Daddy's hit. Daddy? Dallas, tomorrow at 3 on Channel 6. The spirit of Oklahoma on 6. Live, this is Channel 6 Eyewitness News, Tulsa Tonight. With Clayton Vaughn, Bob Lozier, meteorologist Jim Giles, and Bill Teagan Sports. Good evening, Bob Lozier is on vacation this week. I'm Clayton Vaughn. Neron saw flames as he was driving by the Park Chase apartment complex near I-244 early this morning. Neron notified firefighters, helped a family escape from their second floor window, and then alerted other apartment residents. Run back upstairs to another apartment. Some of the apartment residents had to be treated at a local hospital, but all were later released. 30 of the 39 Americans who were kidnapped to held by the terrorist group known as the Islamic Holy War. Today, the organization threatened, quote, more blows against the United States should there be any retaliation for the TWA hijacking and hostage taking. The State Department said today that it is was surprised by his dismissal and the Soviet Union has a new president. Those stories when the news continues. Yes. Soviet foreign policy veteran. Europe's first interplanetary spacecraft is on its way to a rendezvous with the famed Halley's Comet next year. The European Space Agency temperatures fueling acres of California brush fires, but green countries in store for a beautiful, warm Fourth of July holiday. Stay with us. Out in Southern California and out in uh, Southern Arizona, I guess where the temperatures again today were well into the 100 degree range and uh, they're a lot more unfortunate than we are here in Tulsa even though the weather has turned a bit warmer for our upcoming 4th of July holiday. Jim Giles and the weather for this Tuesday night. You've had 102 in the LA area today and it looks to me like it's going to be at least another three or four days of that unbelievable heat over the southwest. We're going to get warm but nothing like those folks out over the southwest. Take a look at our current conditions. Not all that bad right now. Under fair skies, cooling off slowly, 79 degrees, 67 percent. Our relative humidity, light southerly breeze at 6. Rising barometer, 30.06 inches of mercury. Nice and mild over the eastern part of the United States, but downright hot over the west. In the midsection, kind of in between 82. Minneapolis, St. Paul, 89 degrees. Kansas City, 90 in the Tulsa area, 96 down around Dallas. Look at Phoenix, 115. 119 degrees, Thermal, California, 102 in Sacramento, same reading in L.A. It looks like upper 90s and some even isolated low 100s over much of the west and the northwest, 100 degrees around Salt Lake City. Looking over towards New York, 78 degrees today, 86 in Atlanta. Here's our current satellite view and with very little north-south temperature gradient or temperature difference over the United States. No strong storm systems to talk about. Little wind shift line, some slightly cooler air dropping into the north central U.S. Also that wind shift line over Oklahoma continues to drift ever so slowly in a southeasterly direction. Still associated with some storms down that way. Here's a better look and we can see some heavier storms moving out of southeast Oklahoma into Arkansas. Pretty good size hail up to golf ball size. Northeast Texas, southwestern Arkansas, the extreme southeastern part of Oklahoma down around Idabel, even just south of Stigler near golf ball size hail. Composite radar showing the showers again moving mostly out of our state and decreasing up around Wichita. Some showers or thunderstorms. They'll be moving into part of green country before the night is over. Scattered showers out over the west, uh, over Colorado and parts of New Mexico as well. Here's the way the radar picture looked from about 5 o'clock this evening through the uh, uh, last three or four hours. 
Thunderstorms kind of boiling around down over the southeast as we see that next wave of showers moving into Wichita. Decreasing now within the next two or three hours, part of our uh, viewing area up over southeastern Kansas, probably a sprinkle or two that could move on over into green country before the late night period is over and into the early morning hours. Hot over green country today. It'll be hotter though over the next several days. 90 degrees in Tulsa, National Weather Service report up around the Bartlesville area, Mr. Trommel, 92 degrees, 89 degrees, Julie Smith in Sedan, Kansas. Look at that 97 degrees from Glenn Sizemore in the Tahlequah area, 89 down around Tallahena. Some of our metro spot are high temperatures, 93 in Sepulpa, 92. Fire Station 2 in Bixby, 96 degrees, very hot. Owasa, look at Cleveland, uh, Oklahoma, 98 degrees. Lana Ingalls with that report. Our forecast through the overnight period, it will be partly cloudy. Just a slim chance of those thunder showers moving into green country. 67 degrees overnight low for tomorrow morning. Still a slight chance of scattered showers or thunderstorms. Mid 70s, sunrise is 611, mostly cloudy to partly cloudy skies. And then for tomorrow afternoon, partly uh, sunny, I believe. Slight chance of thunderstorms up around 91. It will be humid, a little bit uncomfortable. Our outlook on Thursday, it'll be a hot one. Quite humid, 93 degrees under partly cloudy skies. Just the slimmest chance of showers. Friday about the same, 92. And long about Saturday, more of the same. Low to mid 90s coming up then into that next week period. So it's going to be hot. It's going to be humid. Our chance of showers way down. Do watch the heat during this uh, 4th of July period because it will be hot and uncomfortable. Good advice. Thank you very much, Jim. Tulsa Drillers are back home now trying to widen their lead in the Texas League East. Up next, Mr. T, Bill Teagans with highlights and the other Tuesday sports. So travelers at County Stadium, Drillers tied for first place in the East. Ring again, he has decided to take on Michael Spinks, September 20th in Atlantic City. A victory would give Holmes a tie with Rocky Marciano for most wins in a career without a loss at 49-0. This will be for the International Boxing Federation heavyweight title. Special racing program coming up Thursday tomorrow in the regular street stocks. Creighton today placed on one-year probation in basketball by the Missouri Valley Conference. The infractions were not major ones. No reach contract agreement will be a rich man. You know, you were talking about that man who uh, lost the ball playing center field yes. and uh, he lost it in the sun, you said. Well, perhaps. that's what I always say. Doesn't, doesn't that also happen when you just take your eye off the ball? I never played baseball, but I know that happened in well, that's the Well, yeah, that's the excuse you always use is because you probably weren't paying a lot of attention and uh, you ah, I see. weren't paying close enough attention. So the sun is an excuse. That's right. Or the lights or whatever you can come up with. <laughs> I see. Anything in a pinch. That's right. Thank you, Bill. Some final items right after this. Clothing for Eyewitness News provided by Heralds. Tomorrow, a little bit 90s over the next few days. Just a slight chance of showers late tonight and tomorrow. The heat, you can count on it. All right, thank you, Jim. A Texas-born model, Jerry Ms. Hall also says she got her advice from a good source, who was her mother. Now here's Bill to tell you what <laughs> priorities that you should put those in in case you want to follow Ms. Hall's advice. Well, you can't beat a good meal, can you? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Clean that house. It's Tuesday, July the 2nd, 1029 in Tulsa tonight. Good night. Tonight on Late Night 6, Dennis Weaver stars as McLeod on the CBS late movie Sharks. But first, it's Tom Selleck as Magnum P.I. Next, here on 6. The spirit of patriotism lights up the Tulsa skyline. Join Channel 6 on the Arkansas River for this Oklahoma 4th of July tradition. The spirit of Oklahoma on 6. Live, this is Channel 6 Eyewitness News at Noon. With Mary Grady and meteorologist Jim Giles. Good afternoon. At the top of our news, three Edmond grocery store employees were found shot to death, execution style, early this morning. Police say the bodies of the three men were found about... Coming up next on News 8 at 5, the execution of three men has police searching for clues. We'll tell you why a fair housing bill is thought by many to be discriminatory. And we'll take you to summer camp, where the lesson is about life. In sports, we'll find out why Olympian Bart Connor says it's time for him to hit the comeback trail. The weather is going to get hotter and hotter. We'll have details to these and other stories. 
including why this cream-filled sponge cake is an important part of America. Uncover the untold secrets behind the superstars on the start of something big. Cher was a troubled teen who might have led a life of crime. Esther Williams, World War II shattered her Olympic dreams. Tom DeLuise, gift of laughter, led the way out of the ghetto. Plus, super writer Sidney Shelton, Dallas star Steve Keneally, Steve Allen's hilarious beginnings of everyday things, and the start of the Ed Sullivan Show. Tantalizing trivia and superstar success. That's the start of something big. It's your place for the start of something big, Sunday at 1030. Spirit of Oklahoma. This is Channel 6 Eyewitness News at Noon with Mary Grady and Bob Cooper with the weather. Good afternoon. At the top of our news, America celebrates its 209th birthday today with a flurry of festivities guaranteed to dazzle the world. Gatlinburg, Tennessee kicked off Independence Day celebrations with a parade of floats, marching band, and fireworks just after midnight. In Randolph, disaster at the Airlooks Fireworks Factory. And we'll take a look at some patriotic pups. The game will begin at 7. All proceeds will be split 21 ways for the families of the victims. Well, officials in California are asking the public to attend professional fireworks celebrations this week. At business at Wimbledon Farms, where Hillary... The ruling by the Oklahoma Supreme Court has not made operators of the Creek Na National Bingle Hall... However, it is regulated by the state. Uh, we feel like we fall under the uh, civil regulatory type law that the uh, state has no jurisdiction to uh, control our bingo operation. Game five to players because tribes can claim exemptions from state jackpot regulations. It's firecracker weather for this 4th of July. Bob Cooper has the forecast for Independence Day when we come back. Bob Cooper is here today with our 4th of July forecast. It's well, going to be a warm one, isn't it? It was on this day in 1776. Jim <laughs> Giles said to the Continental <laughs> Congress, we better knock off. It's going to be hot today. Today's 4th of July will be very much like that uh, July 4th and 76. Temperatures into the 90s. Luckily, we're not facing the kind of decisions that they were today. As far as our 12 noon readings is 4th of July. It's partly cloudy and 83 degrees. Humidity at 64%. Southerly breezes at 7 miles an hour. Pressure 29.92 and falling at this hour. Early morning lows still for the most part moderate across America. Not very many extremely cold readings with the exception of the national low of 37 at Gunnison, Colorado. A little cooler over the northern plains, the Rockies to the Pacific Northwest, mainly in the 50s, 55 in Seattle. Warmer naturally at 75 in Los Angeles. They got to 100 today. Look for more 100 plus readings in the desert southwest this afternoon. Our wake up was at 69 this morning, 66 in Little Rock, 68 in Atlanta, likewise in New York City. A look at our North American satellite picture. We're giving you a look at this particular satellite to, to have a look at some low pressure developing now and building over the northwest, uh, just off the northwest coast of our country. It's possible that stuff could roll in here in a couple of days and at least give some relief to the Pacific uh, Southwest. As far as our own weather situation, we're having a real close look at this trough which is developing and building at this hour to the northwest of us. The unstable air associated with it could clash with our moist atmosphere at the lower levels to help create some shower and thunderstorm activity late tonight. Better look now at our regional satellite picture shows the state of Oklahoma for the most part to be under clear skies. It's very nice. There is a trouble spot we have to look at though to the southeast of us. On our regional radar picture you see shower and thunderstorm activity, much of which has now moved into the Gulf Coast. This is diminished in the past couple of hours. San Antonio, Texas has had five and a half inches of rain in the past 24 hours. They're 26 inches above normal for the year. Simply astounding. A look now at uh, Channel 6 Mac radar from the National Weather Service, except for the ground clutter and evidence around the city. We're in absolutely no problem whatsoever, and we're looking for uh, that rain not to start until at least after the fireworks are over. We're hoping we can get that kind of timing this evening. Warm temperatures, warmish at 80 in Oklahoma City at this hour. Warmer to the west, 88 in Hobart. It's 87 in Gage. 
up to 90 already in Dodge City, a little cooler to the eastern portions of our state at 79 in McAllister. We're at 83 and sunshine for the most part over the state of Oklahoma. A few more hours of that in store for us. Our spotter lows included 64 degrees, the report from Lana Ingalls in Cleveland. It was 67 as we heard from Tim Bird and Paul Huska. 66 in Oak City this morning and Wayne Ramsey, 64 in Tallahena. He already had his fireworks show that did at the Tallahena Veterans Center last night. He said it was great. Tomorrow's lows with the possibility of a wake up to scattered showers and thunderstorms will be gravitating near 70 degrees for the most part. For the pinpoint forecast this afternoon, July 4th, your independent celebration should be reasonably uh, reasonable. Hot, hazy, and humid, though. Heat indexes could get over 100. Watch it and take precautions. 93, the expected air temperature high. A firecracker jack night at the river parks. Partly cloudy and warm in the evening. Mid-80s for the temperature. 844, the sunset. Look at the possibility of showers and thunderstorms developing likely near midnight or somewhat after. 71, the overnight low. Tomorrow morning, we could wake up to a continued chance of showers and thunderstorms with temps in the mid-70s. And tomorrow afternoon, good chance of rain ending by midday on Friday with more hot weather. Easterly breezes, 90 degrees the expected high. The outlook now for the weekend, back to what we had been having, 90 degrees and hot on Saturday. Likewise, 92, somewhat warmer on Sunday. And we're right back to the heat wave, if you will, the, the oven again at 94 degrees by the time Monday comes here. All right, thank you, Bob. Couldn't have picked it any better. Some pup owners are perking up their pets for a patriotic salute. Their story after this. Clothing for Eyewitness News provided by Harks. Looks like good weather for the fireworks after a high of 93. Temperatures in the 80s and partly cloudy skies this evening. All right. Thank you, Bob. And finally... Cocker Spaniel, I guess, who might have been in that story. Bad. <laughs> thank you, Bob. Weather's too hot <laughs> to think straight. <laughs> thank you, Bob. That's our report for this afternoon. Thank you for joining us. Red Cross. The spirit of Oklahoma on six. Live, this is Channel 6 Eyewitness News at Noon with Mary Grady and meteorologist Ben Pringle. Good afternoon. At the top of our news, convicted mass murderer Roger Dale Stafford has one last chance for a stay of execution. The U.S. Supreme Court must grant the stay, otherwise Stafford will die two weeks from today. Stafford was injured in 1983 when a car driven by Keith Snow crossed from the oncoming lane on Interstate 40 and crashed into their car. Moments later, a car driven by John Myers crashed into the rear of the Wisconsin family's vehicle. The suit claims both men had been drinking at nightclubs just before that accident occurred. The Oklahoma Horse Racing Commission has decided to appeal a judge's order to grant a paramutual horse racing license to a proposed track in Thackerville. In codes, her story and the tragic story of victims of child molestation when the news continues. If he went through it when he, he was a child. I would have liked it to have come out so that we had a fairy tale happy ending that that the big bad wolf went off to therapy and changed into a person and and all the people lived happily ever after but it didn't work that way this is tracy berry reporting in health related news a new poll finds almost six out of ten americans exercise to keep fit in a nationwide telephone survey fifty seven percent of those questions said they exercised in addition to their normal daily activity well, if you're headed outside to exercise, sizzling temperatures await you. Ben Pringle has the forecast after this. Well, Ben Pringle is here with a weather forecast for us that's probably the same as it has been for the last few days. That's exactly right, <laughs> except for the fact that this will probably be the hottest day so far this year, as highs are expected around 96 or so, and that uh, should be the hottest day so far this season. Currently under partly cloudy skies, temperature not too far away from that at 89 degrees, a relative humidity 52 percent. We have southwest winds helping to heat things up at 12 miles per hour. America's timekeepers take on new posts. We'll take a look when we come back. 
clothing for eyewitness That's not a bad idea for a parking meter. I had the best idea I saw. All right. That's our report for this afternoon. Thank you for joining us. the streets. I'll be in touch. Sunday.